All right, so letter B says, find the coordinates of a point where the tangent line is horizontal. Okay, horizontal is what kind of slope? Zero. zero. That means the numerator is zero, but the denominator is not. Because if you have zero over zero, that is indeterminate, that's something else entirely. So we want our numerator to y, this is letter B, we want our numerator to be zero, but we want our denominator to not be zero. A zero slope would be like zero over one, zero over two, zero over 17 million, um, but zero over zero is something else. Are we together still? Okay, so you get a point for saying this. After this, and this is why I kind of don't like this problem very much, there is no calculus whatsoever. It is all algebra, okay? Which you could love or hate, but it probably threw everybody off because they were probably like, where's the calculus? All right, so what would you do to solve this for y? Okay, divide by two, you get y is zero, and you're gonna take that and plug it back into the original problem. So if you plug in y is zero, what do you get on this side? Zero equals two plus zero. What do you think? Doesn't exist. Now reread this. It says find it or explain why no such point exists. That was an option. So we're gonna say um, no solution. So no point with horizontal tangent line. Yes, they will. There's a point for that. That's not like, was that hard? No, but is that exceedingly weird? Yes, and so I'm guaranteeing everybody was probably like, like what on earth am I supposed to do? You know, that's why I kind of don't like that very much. I've never heard of that one. Okay. All right, so let's look at C. It's almost the exact same thing. Can you read C? It's saying the same thing except what? Vertical. So that means you want your denominator to be zero, but not the numerator. Okay, so we're gonna set y squared minus two x equal to zero. We want the denominator to be zero, but not the numerator. Because again, if they were both zero, that's something else entirely. So you get a point for saying that. Now this one's a little tougher because you can't just get X or Y by itself and get a number, all right? So there's a little bit more deep algebra here. Would you rather get Y by itself or X by itself? And there is an easier one. Why would it be better to do X? It's not squared, okay? So what would you start doing to get X by itself? Yeah, add that over and then divide by two. Now you can put y squared over two. I'm gonna write one half y squared just cause that's my personal preference, it's up to you. And then just like we did with the other one, you're gonna take that and plug it back into the original equation, um, this time for x. So I'm gonna repeat this, but just plug this in for x. If you're like, hey, this isn't calculus. Yeah, you're right, that's what I told you. All right, so it'll be six times that times y equals two plus y cubed. And then we're just gonna solve that, hopefully. The other one was no solution, so you can pretty much assume this one, you'll probably get an answer. All right, so what does that give you for this first part? Three y cubed, good, because you have a y squared and then another y. Subtract the y cubed over, so three y cubed minus one y cubed, 2y cubed, very good, perfect. You guys are nailing this review. You're all with me and listening, we're all together here. All right, and then, divide by two, you get one. Oh my gosh, we got an answer. So you're gonna take y is one and plug it back into the original equation to try and get x. So if y is one, what do you get for that first part? All right, six x, equals two plus one cubed, just one. 
Um, yeah, so you get 6x equals 3, divide by 6x equals 1 half. So to put it all together and write a sentence, you would say vertical tangent line at uh, what point? 1 half, what? x, y. Um, it was a point for writing out the first thing we did, and then it was a point for, um, it was a point for this step, plugging that back in, and then it was a point for the answer.